Chapter 8 This is a bad idea, Kyler muttered softly, standing in the shadows next to June. He looked down to see she was still holding his hand. And let go, damn it! He said, ripping his arm away. Sheesh. June rolled her eyes. This is for you, dummy. You think I want to sign up for the baseball team? In a way, it seems like it. Seems like you're trying to play through me. That's ridiculous. I know you want to play again, and this is your chance. Don't you get it? Behavioral issues. I didn't stop because I wanted to. June turned to him curiously. What did happen, by the way? Kyler looked at her grimly. It wasn't my fault. So, what happened? Kyler sighed heavily, putting an arm on June's shoulder. The world is a cruel place, Juniper. I hit a ground ball to third. Third baseman threw it to first to try to get me out. Beat him by a mile. They called me out anyway. June blinked. So, I ask again, what happened? Oh, I... I knocked the first baseman out since he was talking trash. That is 100% your fault. By a mile, Juniper! She faced forward, seeing the baseball coach nearly finishing up picking up the equipment. She turned to him once again. Will you at least try? Okay. I promise to try. Oh, wait. Tryouts are over. Wow. What a shame. Can we go home now? June ignored him and jogged forward. Kyler whined harshly and walked after her. Wait, sir! She called, waving. The man looked over at her almost immediately. Sorry, can we just talk really fast? The man was almost as short as Juniper and very round in shape. His bushy mustache looked identical to Mr. Gable's. His red balding was shining in the sunlight. What can I do for you, young lady? He said in a Minnesota-esque accent. We were just wondering if you had time for a quick tryout. I know it's really late and all, but we'd really appreciate it. Who's we? Kyler asked bluntly, catching up to her. Coach shrugged. Sorry, they ended a bit ago. There's one more session next week. Try to be on time, okay? He started to walk away, but June panicked and grabbed his arm. Listen, sir, I know this is completely out of line, but I can't tell you how much I'd appreciate it if you let him try out. It'll just take 15 minutes. Kyler started to speak, but then didn't bother. He just looked off in the distance. Coach shook his head. Like I said, there's another set of tryouts. You can still try to make the team next week. That's all I can do for you. But he's really good. I'm sure he is, but I gotta get home to my family too, you know. Kyler sighed. Come on, Juniper, let's not waste his time. Coach snickered. Oh, so you'd waste my time. Kyler's ears pricked up, and he looked at him. His expression sharpened. No. June looked at him. She'd never seen such a competitive, confident look in his eyes. Well, in that case, I'll see you next week, and let's see you prove it. Like she said, Kyler said quickly, stopping him from walking away. Fifteen minutes. That's all we need. June looked in awe. Kyler suddenly looked so cool. He wasn't smiling, but the fire in his eyes was palpable. Coach sighed, glancing back at his car. His, his assistant coach came jogging up. Mr. McGee, what's going on? Mr. Harris, go get a glove and a bat for this young man. I think he's going to try to prove a point. Mr. Harris ran off after a few moments of glancing between them. When he returned, he brought a bucket of baseballs, a bat, and a fielding glove. Kyler put on the fielding glove and began walking to the diamond. Mr. McGee continued next to him, as June trailing a few feet behind. So, what's your name? Kyler. Queen? That's the one. You're quite the case, I hear. Kyler grew warm behind the ears. June stepped in between them, looking at Mr. McGee. He is, she admitted. Kyler spread his arms slightly, a demanding gesture. But he's also really good at baseball. She turned to him and pinched his cheek sarcastically. And a sweetheart deep down, she said in the baby talk voice that irritated him. He glanced over at her, his cheeks stretched. He growled viciously and she released him. Mr. McGee looked at him after reaching the pitcher's mound. What position you play? Short. Mr. McGee grimaced. Ouch. We have a fantastic shortstop on our team already. Never gets hurt, never gets tired. Defensive team captain. Probably won't get a lot of playing time. Kyler shrugged. Guess it couldn't hurt to try. Besides, it'll give me an excuse to be out of the house. 
Mr. McGee smiled at him and gestured over to Short. Kyler quickly removed his jacket and buttoned up. He tossed them onto June's head and walked over to Short. What the... She said, pulling his clothing out of her face. Do I look like a coat rack to you? She looked at him get into position. His legs widened and his stance lowered. His glove was already on. He was wearing all black besides his shoes, which were all white. Two of the worst colors to wear on a baseball diamond. The dirt was going to show. Kyler quickly adjusted his checkered wristband, and Mr. McGee grabbed a few balls and dragged them to home plate. He picked up the bat, pointed it at first, where the assistant coach stood. Routine grounders first. Just throw them on over to Mr. Harris. We'll start with grounders towards third. Move to your right and throw them over. Kyler nodded, bouncing lightly back and forth. June sat in the bleachers, ready to watch her friend. He looked a lot more serious than he did when they played in gym class. Mr. McGee tossed up the ball and hit it towards the hole between second and third. Kyler took a few steps to his right, fielded the ball, heated on over to first without any problems. Mr. Harris dropped the ball into his bucket, ready for more. Good arm, Mr. McGee remarked. Kyler didn't respond, he just got back into position. Another grounder, just a bit further to, th to third this time. Kyler strafed over quickly, got it off the backhand, turned, threw it to first. His momentum carried him away from his target, so the throw was off, but caught on the fly easily. Mr. McGee tossed up another ball and hit it, but this time it went over second base, even a little bit towards the other side of the infield. Ah, sorry, he said, sure it would reach the outfield. But Kyler had other plans. He turned his direction on a dime, kicking dirt towards third with the force of his legs. He picked up a speed to the height that not even June had seen and dove with immense grace. He caught the ball, quickly threw himself up to a knee, and threw the ball with intense fury towards first. Mr. Harris caught it, took a few moments before dropping it into the bucket. Mr. McGee stared at Kyler, a few moments before laughing. <laughs> You didn't have to go that far for it. Could have just let it go, you know. Kyler shrugged. Doubt you'd say that during a real game. Mr. McGee grinned. You really aren't wasting my time after all. A few more grounders were hit all over Kyler's range. Mr. McGee stopped warning Kyler where he hit it and just tried to get one past him, but to no avail. Kyler was far too quick. Quicker than even June thought. June couldn't stop grinning and giggling up there, just enjoying Kyler work so hard. She was having as much fun as he was, or at least she hoped. Mr. McGee decided to hit one more grounder, but because how much he was swinging, he swung too early and hit it for a line drive towards left center. He cursed himself before putting the bat down. Suddenly, he heard a popping noise and the crunching of dirt. He looked over at Kyler crouched down and then pulled a baseball from his mitt. Mr. Harris whistled. Mr. McGee looked at him skeptically. You catch that? Wasn't that high? Kyler responded, tossing him the ball. Mr. McGee caught it and turned to June, who was clapping dramatically. Way to go, Kyler! Woo! What a champ! Kyler waved at her, blushing, obviously embarrassed. It was apparent he didn't have many people cheering for him over the years. June was more than happy to embarrass him. Okay, grab a bat. Let's see if you have any shortcomings on the other side. Kyler removed his glove and tossed it to the side. Mr. McGee stepped on the mound and turned around to face him. June propped her knees up and leaned on them as she watched Kyler take the familiar stance she once saw. The bat. The bat was rotating slowly over his shoulder, his right knee bent, his left straight with his left angle popping gently. She knew he was serious. Where do you want it? Kyler asked. Mr. McGee laughed. Shouldn't I be asking you that? No. Where do you want me to hit it? Mr. McGee glanced at Mr. Harris. You got bat control, son? Used to. All right, he said, winding up. Straight center. He pitched the ball softly to Kyler, obviously with the intent for him to actually hit it. Kyler slowly raised his foot and slammed it down, revolving the bat across the plate gracefully, cracking the ball forward. The ball flew several feet above Mr. McGee's head and, sure enough, landed directly into center field. Mr. McGee looked at the ball and laughed. Not bad. Let's see down the line and right. Another pitch. Kyler swung the exact same way, just a tad later this time. The ball curved up towards first and landed just outside the foul line for a foul ball. Kyler groaned, but Mr. McGee made an impressed sound. Oh, no, don't feel bad. That was still pretty good. Just take a few swings and hit him wherever. 
Mr. McGee threw Kyler six pitches, and all six were hit for line drives into the outfield, all in different directions. Mr. McGee sighed, obviously tired. You're pretty good, gotta say. Should I come back next week, then? Mr. McGee spit on the ground. Tell you what, he said. Hit this one as hard as you can. Foul or not, that fence is a ways away. Hit it as close as you can. Mr. Harris looked toward the outfield, then at Kyler. Kyler glanced over at June, who waved at him playfully. Kyler shrugged and lowered into his stance. Mr. McGee went into his windup, then delivered the ball to Kyler. Kyler inhaled sharply, raising his left foot much higher than he had in the last few swings. He slammed it down with intense force that caused the dirt under him to fly. He heaved the bait over the plate with intense force, grunting audibly. The ball was struck with an earth-shattering cry. Mr. McGee turned nearly as quick as Ashton have, obviously alarmed by the sound. Kyler watched casually as the ball sailed through the blue sky, nearly getting lost in the clouds. Mr. Harris dipped over a little bit, trying to get a good view. June watched it fly with slanted lips, obviously not surprised at all. The ball sailed over the fence with a few feet to spare. Mr. McGee stared for a while, before turning back to Kyler as if he had seen a ghost. That feet is 330 feet away. This is a college practice field. Kyler shrugged. So, you should have come back next week? Mr. McGee shook his head. No, don't bother. You're on the team. June cheered emphatically. Yes, he's the best. That's my boy. Kyler rolled his eyes at her. Knock it off. You forget your pom-poms. Should I show up to your games dressed as your personal cheerleader? Don't put that image in my head, Kyler responded, walking to the mound. When should I come back and where? To get your uniform in about two weeks, meet up the team just outside the gymnasium at four o'clock. Sound good? Yep, sounds good. You sure they won't get mad at me for not going to tryouts? After what you did, you'd make the rest of the kids feel insecure. What number do you want? Kyler shrugged. Don't care, just a number. Well... That's a good attitude, but pick one. Kyler turned to June. What's your favorite number? June's brows furrowed. What? My favorite number? Yeah. Uh, well, two, because... Two, Kyler said, returning to Mr. McGee. Okay, Mr. McGee resounded with a smile. Two weeks, be there. Kyler nodded. Did you just turn away from me? He heard June cry at him. Kyler walked over to her and beckoned her down from the bleachers. She handed him his shirt and jacket. He put both over his shoulder, along with his bag. How do you feel? She asked, a giant smile spread across her lips, her snaggletooth showing. Okay, I guess. Kyler shrugged. Just okay? I mean, you gotta feel better than that. You did great. Enough to make the team, anyway. I wasn't joking about being the personal cheerleader, June admitted. Might not dress up. But I'm going to be coming to every game to cheer you on. Kyler blushed and looked away to hide his face. Do what you want. June smiled. He wouldn't admit it, but she knew that's what he wanted. Now, before we go home, she said with an all-too-familiar voice. Oh, no. Kyler muttered. I need to go grocery shopping. You in? I'm not allowed to say no. Yes, you are. You're just not allowed to not go. You can protest all you want. Once again, Kyler was stuck with cart duty. There was very little he could say to June that would suffice in terms of an excuse not to work so hard on her behalf, but to no avail. Kyler watched June as she looked around excitedly, her short blonde hair getting into her eyes occasionally. June wondered if she needed a haircut, but considering the reason she kept it short was now her number one priority in life, she figured she wouldn't mind letting it grow. Besides, it was nowhere near as long as Kyler's. What should I make for dinner tonight? June asked, glancing over. Kyler shrugged. I don't know. Why ask me? You're eating with us, of course. I am? After that workout and how well you did, I would be pretty surprised if you weren't hungry. Besides, I want to celebrate. Celebrate that I can hit a ball with a stick? I know you're trying to be ornery by belittling every little thing you do, but it's not going to work this time. You did great, and I'm cooking you a meal. That's that. Kyler groaned. Fine. I guess I... I wouldn't mind, like, 
chicken Alfredo if I'm being forced to pick. June looked at him slyly. Oh, chicken Alfredo, huh? Kyler blushed. I like it, I guess. June grabbed a few jars of Alfredo sauce and put them into the cart. I like it too. Don't worry. You deserve something delicious that you picked. When's the last time you got to pick what you eat for dinner? Kyler shrugged. I just eat whatever Kaylee picks. Exactly, June said triumphantly. She dragged his cart around the corner to the frozen food sections and put her finger to her chin. Hmm. Breasts, Kyler said bluntly. June looked over at him strangely for a second, but understood what he meant. Right, chicken. <laughs> Kyler scoffed. You say I'm the pervert. I don't say breasts out loud without context. And didn't you grab my butt today? Kyler looked away as if he didn't even hear June. She rolled her eyes at him, shaking her head. She placed a pack of chicken in the cart and turned around. Her eyes lit up. Oh my god. Kyler turned to her, alert. What is it? She turned to him, her smile nearly as wide as her entire face. Halloween decorations are up! Kyler blinked for a few moments before looking at the decorations. He looked uneasy. June noted he was likely scared easily. I love Halloween so much. Probably my second favorite holiday, easy. Second? Well, first being Christmas, of course. Corny. It's not corny, shut up. June walked down the aisles, looking at the decorations. Seeing pumpkins, zombies, and werewolves got her excited. She saw multiple decorative graves as well as inflatable monsters for the yard. She grinned as she ran her fingers along them. She turned to Kyler, but he was still in the frozen foods. Well, she thought, this doesn't honestly scare him, does it? Kyler, come over here, look at this stuff. Kyler bit his lip, but walked stiffly over to her. Yeah, cool, he said quickly. You're no fun. I mean, look at these decorations. Don't they get you excited? Sure, he said bluntly. Oh, you're hopeless, she said, turning around. Oh, hey, they have costumes here. Awesome. She jogged over to them and began flipping through them like a wardrobe. I was Snow White last year. My costume would probably fit me, but I want to be something else. What's your favorite costume? Kyler shook his head. I don't know. He seemed to be mostly looking at the floor. June frowned at him. If you're that scared, you can go back to the cart. I won't be long. June turned around and continued looking through them. What should I be? She asked aloud. A vampire? No, that's so done before. Oh, I can be dress up like on Breaking Bad. Like the hazmat suits? Those are so cool. Oh, I haven't been a ghost before. I should be a... No! She heard a deathly scream behind her. She jumped out of her shoes and turned to see Kyler wide-eyed as if she had actually seen a ghost. She covered her chest and exhaled, staring at him, confused. Jesus, what is your problem? Kyler shut his mouth, embarrassed. His eyes showed a mixture of fear and shame. He looked away. Sorry, he muttered. I, I just think being a ghost isn't a good idea. You should be something else. He turned around. I, I gotta go. I'll see you tomorrow. He quickly walked out. She blinked. Uh, hey, wait! Kyler! Your dinner! He didn't turn around. He completely abandoned her in the store. She sighed. What just happened? As many times as she tried to pull the answers out of him, June was never able to get Kyler to cough up what exactly happened in the grocery store. She decided she was essentially working towards the definition of ins insanity and gave it up. It was the middle of October and Kyler's dr days were under the 20s. For some reason, she didn't have a lot of faith if his good behavior would continue, considering Eric had pl been placed in most of the classes that she and Kyler had together. And of course, it was Eric's genius idea to sit as close to June as he could. Kyler tried his best to ignore them, but it became harder and harder by the day considering Eric would only ask June for help rather than the teacher. June, being the kind of girl that she was, felt obligated to help him, but always felt that piercing gaze of Kyler on her whenever she did. While she was no longer afraid of Kyler as a person, she was afraid for Eric. The two weeks Kyler had waited for his number had come and gone, and he had already received his full uniform. The first day of practice was upon them, and June dared anyone to try to keep her from cheering him on. 
even if there was no game on the line. Fortunately for her, Ben and Noel wanted to support him as well. She had yet to see him practice in uniform. So, so she waited outside the locker room to greet him. They all sat with their backs to the wall outside the door, sitting next to one another. Noel yawned, and June laid her head on Noel's shoulder. How long does it take to change into an outfit? June groaned. Ben sneezed. Ugh. Don't let him hear you say that. <laughs> he can barely stand the word uniform. Ben sneezed. <laughs> Don't let him hear you say that. He can barely stand the word uniform. June just wants to see Kyler dressed up. June shoved her. Shut up! I just want to support him. You wouldn't be here t if you didn't want to do the same freaking thing. Ben smiled, leaning his head back. Say, June. She turned to him. What's up? About Eric. He started. She stiffened. Him and Kyler are ever going to cool down? It seems like all they do is stare holes into each other, waiting to pounce and go directly for the kill. I mean, you have a plan, right? June shook her head. I wish I did. Honestly, I can't get them to stop. And you know Kyler. If someone tries antagonizing him, he's not going to let him walk away with it. I don't know if it's immaturity or stubbornness. Both combined. Times two, probably. Noelle wrapped her arms around her knees. I still think Kyler's right. Eric's cute, but what's not cute is his attitude. He seriously, seriously needs to stop intentionally picking fights with Kyler. I mean, Kyler may be a total hothead, but it's not like he's walking around the school starting stuff with people. Everyone's starting stuff with him. Yeah, Ben sighed. Problem is, when you're the only... Always the one finishing it. Word gets around quick. June sighed. I don't know what it, Eric's problem is. He seems like deep down he can be nice when he wants to be. Just not to Kyler, I guess. Has he said anything rude to either of you? Not to me, Noel chimed. He even called me cute the other day. Yeah, agreed. He's been polite. Although he's yet to call me cute, which <laughs> is fine. June snickered. They all looked up to see the door open and players pouring out. They were all wearing uniform, white jerseys and pants, with red belts, socks, and a logo that said Sirens on the front, the school mascot. Hat was red with an S of the same font. Some of them wore different sleeves of different colors, as well as cleats, but everything else was the same. The only thing they did she didn't see was Kyler. The last of the players left the room as well as the coach. Hey, wait, June called. Where's Kyler? She asked the coach. He didn't hear her as he left with his players. Ben sighed. I was afraid of this happening. June turned to him, confused. What do you mean? I didn't think it would, but it was possible that he would just try out and not be a part of the team. Noelle blew a raspberry. Well, she said patiently, I'm going to give him hell for making me wait in the hallway for half an hour for no good reason. June sunk. Great. I was so excited for him. Excited for who? A harsh voice asked in front of her. She looked up and saw exactly who she was expecting. But for some reason, her voice caught in her throat. It was Kyler in his uniform. His pants and jersey were both tight around his lean muscles. He wore his wristband on his right wrist. He had a black sleeve down his left arm. His long hair was tamed by his cap, a long strand splitting his eyes curving down the middle of his face. His green eyes popped at the clashing color of red. Noel whistled. Damn, can I take a swing at that? Promise not to strike out. Kyler blinked. With absolutely no practice? Come on, Ashton would smoke you. Noel looked away, smiling. Dense as ever, she muttered. Ben patted him on the shoulder. A sight for sore eyes, man. Never thought I'd see you in a jersey again. Kyler shrugged. I figured if I'm going to do this, I might want to do it right. Well, you look great. Right, June? He turned to June, who was still staring at Kyler as if she had never seen a male before. Kyler's expression showed discomfort. Jeez, Juniper, how many spiders do I have on my face? June shook her head. Uh, sorry, she choked out. I just had never imagined that you'd look like that in this uniform. Kyler blinked. Like what? Noelle wrapped her arm around June. Handsome, she exclaimed. Kyler blushed and looked away. Right, June? Or is that not what you meant? 
June blushed, but laughed in an over-exaggerated tone. Oh, wow, geez, you took forever to get dressed. You better get out there and get some outs and hit some home runs. Hurry or you'll be late for the game. Kyler started toward the door, pointing to the field. It's just practice. Practice, that's what I said. Who said game? Not me. Noelle covered her face and Ben stifled a laugh. Kyler gave her a suspicious look, but walked out the door without another word. June waved at him, walking away, still laughing. When she stopped, she looked down. I never realized how stupid I was until right now. Noelle patted her head. Whenever you want to know how to charm cute boys, just give me a call. He wasn't cute, she said angrily, her face as red as a brick. He was silly looking, ugly even. I mean, really, who'd think he was cute? Noelle poked her in the nose softly. I can show you some mirrors if you're interested. Joe... June stammered a response, but couldn't get it out. She instead stormed out the door, ready to watch Kyler practice. She walked up the hill angrily, gripping her bag. She saw Kyler in his uniform, grounding routine balls to short, and for some reason, yet again, couldn't remove her gaze. <laughs> she grumbled, crossing her arms. He isn't that cute. 